Welcome to the Movies Pal, your for the neighborhood Mastercast, back with you once again for another review. We're talking Vinegar Syndrome again, specifically the April 2021 package and the films therein. Now, uh, the film we're going to talk, talk about today is one that was sort of in contention. There was rumors about a Kevin Tenney movie coming out for a while. I even did a video where we did some detective work. Turns out I was wrong with my prediction. But that's okay, because uh, I haven't seen this movie either. So uh, I was happy to get either Peacemaker or The Cellar from 1989, directed by Kevin Tenney. First off, I want to say this is one of my favorite slips of 2021 already. I love the design. I love the look of it. I love the uh, the textured feel of it. It definitely goes with the, with the movie and the look of the film. You get a little creature in the basement. You get the spear, which I thought was just kind of, you know, decoration, but it really does feature into the plot. But what did I think about the movie? Well, let's get into it. I'm going to unbox it here real quick. This is the alternate artwork. It features a bloody lock. I'm going to open this for you so you can take a look at this as well. Here's the inside with the disc. The, uh, the reverse is just the cover of the slip. The seller. Essentially what you have here is... A cellar dweller type story, uh, but with a Native American twist. A little lemon twist, it's good. Try it. Patrick Kilpatrick plays our hero, and uh, if that name sounds familiar to you, it's probably because you know him as. Come on! Come on! He's almost always the bad guy, so to see him play a dad here and essentially the hero is, is quite unique and quite interesting, and uh, he does a good job. He has just bought an abandoned old farmhouse in the middle of the desert with his new wife and their new baby, and his son is coming to visit for the summer. That is the setup. A divorced dad, newly remarried, has a new baby, and he's trying to reconnect with his son. Not necessarily the, the, the main ingredients for a horror movie, but the best horror movies give your characters human problems and then throw the supernatural at them, right? You think about Poltergeist, any number of horror movies, uh, Rosemary's Baby, the best kind give our characters human struggles and then, hey, there's demons. The seller, unfortunately leads too heavily on the human interpersonal relationship struggles and not as much on the monster stuff, which I gotta be honest, is kind of disappointing. What? No. There is a monster in the cellar. Don't worry, this is a monster movie, but you wouldn't know that until maybe an hour into the movie. Now this is a, a, an hour and 24 minute long movie. Keep that in mind. There are hints that there's something supernatural going on. But all we really get are puddles of slime. Off screen, we get the sort of results of what whatever this toxic sludge is. Now, uh, my interpretation was this was the monster. The monster was like a blob type creature that was bubbling up from the earth. And the Indians were keeping it at bay with this magic spear and, and rabbit's feet. But I did like their definition of rabbit's feet as a sacrificial totem. That's interesting. But uh, here... You don't really get a monster monster until an hour and one minute into the movie where we finally fucking see it. Before that, we see a hand. Uh, you know, you see the slime. You see ravens and crows and whatever, like, cawing. And, oh, well, that's creepy. What does that mean? It's not a monster movie till really until the last 24 minutes of the movie. And that's shitty. That's Honestly, that's 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 super shitty because I, I came to see a monster movie. I... I and this is my opinion. While I think it's interesting they made the choice to do the father and son storyline and focus on this uh, this dad with his estranged son and the new marriage and all that stuff, I didn't come for that. I think that's good. Give that to us in the first 30 minutes. Okay, establish what we got. Okay, establish the baseline. We got it. But give me the fucking monster. I know you have a monster. Sure, maybe it doesn't look amazing, but it doesn't look bad. The monster actually looks pretty decent. 
As a matter of fact, uh, Patrick Kilpatrick uh, uh, has something to say about the monster. Let me share this from the, uh, the, the behind the scenes feature end of this. I told Howard and Karen, I said, spend the money on the special effects on the monster in the cellar. And of course, uh, following my very sage advice, they hired a double amputee and put him in a crocodile suit. The seller suffers from what a lot of, unfortunately, Vinegar Syndrome titles suffer from, lack of agency. The characters have nothing to do, literally nothing to do. They just kind of go through the day. It never really develops any kind of energy or intensity or actual plot and narrative drive until the, the third act. And that's, in my opinion, way too late. What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? Even the filmmakers, Kevin Tenney and, and the, the cast and crew will acknowledge that the movie is not perfect. It's not a perfect movie. And unfortunately, at times, it's kind of a boring movie. I hate to say it. I really hate to say it. Actually, take any Kevin Tenney movie and you're going to find a better experience than The Demons, Witch Trap, and the characters there are way more fun and they've got way more agency. The Cellar, unfortunately, was something Kevin didn't write. Didn't really have a hand in the pre-production uh, elements. He was just sort of brought on last minute to direct the film. The Cellar just kind of lies limply for an hour with things and setups you, you feel are going to really pay off, and then they don't. It's almost like, oh, oh okay, great. Oh, here, here we go, here we go. Oh. Oh. Oh, shit, here we go, here we go. Let's let's see what happens. Oh, they cut away. Oh. And maybe I had my, my, my hopes a little too high for this one. I was not expecting the ultimate monster movie. I was expecting a monster movie, and I really only got that for the last 20 minutes. Now, does that destroy the movie completely? No, it doesn't. Again, I think Patrick Kilpatrick is a solid actor. The uh, Susan Savoy is really good at this as the as the the new mom. The little boy is really good as well. And I didn't hate the monster. I thought he looked pretty good, and I, I really appreciated how they made him move interestingly. Now that clip where we heard from Patrick, uh, it's explained that uh, they used a double amputee to move the creature around. That's why it moved the way it did. The way it, the, the way it looked was very unique. So kudos to, to the, the, the effects team, which uh, I know the effects team didn't even like the design themselves. But uh, I think they did a really good job of delivering a very unique looking monster. It almost, almost looked like a, like a terror dog from Ghostbusters. Like, you know, like one of those gozer kind of creatures. The seller here is going to get two stars. And that's me being very generous. Now, I appreciate that it was a difficult production. I appreciate that Kevin was brought on at the last minute to put it all together. Uh, he didn't really have a free hand with the script or, or even the casting. So I don't blame him for the movie's faults. However, as a movie fan who loves movies, my opinion is this is a generously a two-star movie. It doesn't really deliver the goods until the end, but I will say the finale is pretty good. The monster stuff is really great and pretty intense. I love the look of the monster. I just wish... This movie had taken a critter's approach where you know you see the critters are there from the beginning, they're running around causing mayhem, you see them, there's blood and guts. There's no real gore in this movie. It cuts away when people get killed. So that's disappointing. It doesn't really deliver the goods, is 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 my final decision on this. You do get uh, a whole bunch uh, a whole boat of features, I should say. You get a director's cut, which is the version I watched, it's the one that Kevin likes the best, obviously. There's a producer's cut as well, which I don't think I have any interest in, in watching. Both of those cuts come with different commentary tracks featuring Kevin and, and uh, Patrick Kilpatrick and Susan Savoy as well. And most interestingly, you get a 46-minute documentary featuring the cast and crew called Chicken Shit to Chicken Salad, which uh, explains the, the sort of tumultuous behind the scenes on the film. So I appreciate the film's issues. I appreciate how difficult it is to make a movie. Uh, but critically... And as a, as a fan and as a Vinegar Syndrome collector, I feel the seller is not an outright dud. Not an outright dud because the, the, the last 20 minutes are really exciting and the monster stuff is super cool. I just really wish there was more of it and I really wish there was a lot less. Uh, what uh, Honestly, what felt to me like relationship family drama padding 
Well, those are my jumbled thoughts on the seller. I hope you enjoyed that, my friend. It's time to close the theater down. Did you get the seller? Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, this is a you know, back and forth conversation here. I've said my piece. Now it's time for you to say yours in the comments down below. Remember, my friend, I love you very much. As a matter of fact, I love you just the way you are. I'm going to grab the curtain and pull it across the silver screen here. And uh, the theater is closed for now.